say an important point that you made this evening was that uh, there's just too much economic self-interest for both sides to risk letting things fall apart to the point yeah. of all-out hostility right. and conflict. Which of you would like to respond to that first? Uh, do they start talking about this right. economic right. interdependence? John Mearsheimer, sure. your 30 seconds sure. starts okay. now. Okay. Well, the economic interdependence argument, which John was just laying out, says that prosperity is of enormous importance. The story that I was telling is a story about security. And in the security story, what matters most is survival. So it's a trade-off between survival on one hand and prosperity on the other. And my argument was, is that when those two come head to head, survival wins every time. Well done. Very good, you're very good. <laughs> Robert Daly. Sure. Robert Daly, your 30 seconds starts now. Like Remember that. that the United States and China have successfully managed frictions of this kind for 37 years. We have a record through diplomacy, through trade, sometimes through confrontation, through engagement, and through restraint. Even after the Tiananmen Massacre of 1989, even after we bombed China's embassy in Serbia in 1999, even after their hot dog pilot hit our plane and they took our crew, basically, hostages at Hainan Island in 2001, we did not become enemies. There's no need to do it in the future. Peter Brooks. I'm surprised John didn't take this argument because it turns out that economic interdependence between countries empirically is a very weak variable and it doesn't protect, uh, protect, prevent countries from going to war. World War I is a perfect example. As I recall, Britain and Germany were each other's largest trading partners. The United States was a major trading partner of Japan before World War II. It does not always prevent people from going to war or for hostilities from breaking out. It's a weak variable, and it would be silly to depend on the idea that countries, that nationalism and other security issues won't trump economic interdependence. Kevin Rudd. Economic interdependence helps, but it is not the final answer to this question. Right. I think we're all agreed on that. What is important is to have sufficient commonality of security interests long term mm -hmm. to have a diplomacy which can sec secure a path up the middle which doesn't go to the binary of capitulation or war. We believe diplomacy is capable of doing that. And if we look around the world today, what are the Chinese and the Americans doing? They're talking about North Korea and nuclear weapons. That's a big example of how they can do it, and I believe the two are not mutually exclusive. <laughs>